So, I have said this repeatedly. We are under the most right-wing government we have seen since Margaret Thatcher. Even arguably more right-wing than Margaret Thatcher. Not only that, but the Tory government is now full of free market fundamentalists who are basic aim is that the government should have nothing to do with the, regulating the economy and as far as they are concerned the market should be left to do what the market wants to do and that will cause untold disasters you you look at regulations and more often than not when eu protections and regulations are explained to people they tend to agree with it you know it's so funny that you hear conservative ministers brag about how we have the highest food standards and all these standards in you know they were quote better than europe they weren't they were exactly the same even some com even some countries have better standards but the eu was like this is like the minimum we're going to allow and other countries went above and beyond which is fine because they were allowed to do that the problem is is that we now face a government who even that minimum level that the eu would set they don't even want that they want to go lower than that far far lower and i've said it all the time and i'm going to keep on repeating it we will have to fight battles to keep basic things that we have taken for granted for so long. And one of the things that we can see that they desperately want to get rid of is the working time directive. And this could have huge, huge implications on people in the UK. Because as I've already said, some companies already treat their workers awfully. With that minimum protection now gone, how do you think they're going to treat their workers then? So before we jump into the article, please do remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a one of donation link. And thank you very much to the people who do support me that way. So, on with the article then. So, this comes from The Independent, and the title of the article is Burnout Britain Looms as Gove and Allies plan to axe the working time directive so how would the eu referendum have gone if the nhs brexit bus had re replaced that infamous pledge of the 350 million a week extra with the truth perhaps something like the eu guarantees holidays and rights at work let's work longer hours and scrap time off Let's take back control. It's an interesting thought experiment to conduct in the wake of reports the Environmental Secretary Michael Gove, who stood in the front of that bus and then tried to weasel his way out of, out of the lie when challenged on it by Labour's West, uh, West Stirling in the House of Commons, is pushing for scrapping of the EU's working time directive at today's crunch Brexit cabinet meeting. The headlines in newspapers, friendly to him, billed as offering workers the opportunity to do more overtime and to get paid more. Indeed, a source told The Sun on Sunday that the move would, quote, put back the power to decide how hard to work in the hands of people who matter, the ordinary British worker. <clears throat> so, the Ashes series might not have might not have been over so quickly if the England cricket team had had access to that sort of spin. And it is misleading reporting about the directive that shows it work it, it works and is rife. The fact is that the ordinary British worker can already opt out of it uh, if they so if they do so to choose. Moreover, the protections it offers to those who don't want to do so are relatively weak and that goes for the enforcement of them as well they seldom they they seldom share <laughs> scare unscrupulous bosses and i was told the tuc of a mechanic who had been ordered to sign uh, to sign the opt-out or get lost and such stories are by no means uncommon 
So, you know, such basic protections that we take for granted and are being abused already. And now these protections are just wanted gone. It's, it's unbelievable. The directive's adoption, nevertheless, has seen the number of people working more than 48 hours a week falling to 3.3 million from the 4 million that we had before. But the British worker still works some of the longest hours in Europe. Only Austria and Romania employees spend longer at their desks. Meanwhile, the biggest problem with the UK labour force continues to be its poor productivity. And the two are very linked, because the more exhausted you are, the less productive you are, and thus the less healthier you are. And what's shocking, many of you may remember um, the infamous opening line to Britannia Unchained that says that British workers are the laziest in Europe because they have so much protections to protect them. And as, as a result, the British worker is lazy. That was written by members who are now serving in Boris Johnson's cabinet. We have to worry. We have to worry. It really is going to cause so much more problems to, to working people in Britain. And it's terrifying. It really is. So research by Health and Safety Laboratory concluded in 2003 found that sufficient evidence for us is to be concerned about the productivity and negative effects of working long hours on physical health with cardiovascular disease among men cited as a particular problem. It also found evidence, uh, or, or some evidence shall we say, that working long hours can lead to stress or mental ill health and said that there was cause for concern about the potential for more accidents at work. The potential for, the, for scrapping the directive would be bad enough if it were to be just, uh, just hours uh, that it concerns itself with. But there's lots more besides that at stake. It also guarantees paid holiday which hundreds of thousands of female part-time workers, for example, didn't get before it was adopted. Then there are rest breaks and days off. Again, the protections it offers are still weak when it comes to day, days off. Days off, it demands that only workers get one week or two in any fortnight. In other words, it allows people to work 12 days at a stretch but again, they are, but again, they are so, quote, better than nothing. And given all this, why would anyone willingly vote to get rid of them? The answer is they wouldn't if they understood what was really at stake. But of course, uh, it isn't workers uh, that the plan is aimed at. And it's laughable to suggest that it is. This isn't really aimed, and it isn't even, even really aimed at their bosses. Good ones already know that they are cutting off their noses to spite their faces by, by driving their employees into the ground and offer them better than the directive de demands as a result. No, the plan is, uh, in fact, to sop... Uh, 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 oh, 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 there we go. The plan is, in fact, a sop to the Audrevillian Tory right on whose support Michael Grove is likely to depend if he's to further his ambition of becoming Prime Minister. That means skewering some of the most vulnerable workers in Britain as a part of an attempt to create a Thatcherite theme park or a foggy Singapore, something that only a small number of Leave voters would probably actually tell you they were after when they took the decision, then so be it. With apologies to Winston Churchill, seldom in history have so many lies been told by so <laughs> so many lies been told by by so few. And it is it is really important that we that we protect those. And here's the thing: there are good bosses. In fact, um, 
as many of you know, right at the start of the pandemic, um, I got set into furlough by, by my boss. And quite frankly, um, unfortunately, I would lose my job because, unfortunately, again, down to the government um, and the fact that the business did what it did. Um, you know, we ran events and we did a lot of work with schools. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that work. So the business had no money coming in. So my boss had to take the watch the decision. Um, you know, some of us got laid off. That was a business of about 25 people. There's now about between four and five people working there. And they are just, just hanging on by a, by a, by a, by a finger. And I really do hope they survive. I really do hope so. Because they were a fantastic company. He was a fantastic boss. Um, you know, arguably, he let a lot of workers um, walk all over him. A bit too much. But he was just such a good boss to work for. I got the mythical unicorn. I got a, I got a four-day work week. <laughs> you know? Uh, it was fantastic. But he let me do that. And I asked because... and. You know, because at the time, um, he said, I can't afford you to pay you more, but I want to do other stuff because I want to keep you on. And so I got a four-day work week. It was fantastic. I, you know, and that was a benefit of working there. And like I say, you know, so many other stories I can talk about, but I really don't want to. He was a fantastic boss. He was an absolutely fantastic boss. And there are fantastic bosses out there who know and understand that it's not worth working their workers into the ground. But unfortunately, there are bad bosses and there are even worse bosses than that who will take advantage of these being gone. Who, as we said, the TUC there, a union, a mechanic who was being forced to opt out. Not, you, not that you've got the decision, like the directive says, no, you're being forced. And, you know, things are already bad for a lot of people out there. And if you get rid of something like this, something that's so important, because this doesn't just, as was said there, it doesn't just cover your how many hours you work. It covers your holiday, time off, so much. And the protections were already pretty weak for it. And yet, now, that could be gone. And that is going to cause so, so much trouble for so many workers. I, I keep on telling this story because I think it's, it, it bears repeating. So, there's a warehouse in Barnley called Assos. You might have, might have heard of the company. Uh, don't buy their products ever again, please. Because I'm, I'm sure you'll agree they're worth boycotting. So, the infamous story about the warehouse in Barnsley is that there is an ambulance on station there 24 7 around the clock why now that's NHS resources being wasted why is there an ambulance stationed there that much because one person a week suffers a heart attack at that warehouse that's shocking and there are numerous other stories out there, horror stories of working in, in Assos warehouses up and down the country. And think on this. If that's how bad they're treating their employees now, how bad are they going to treat their employees when the rules are off the table? So my, my voice to everyone in the UK is this. Don't risk it. Write to your MP, regardless of who they are. Set a fire under them. Encourage your friends and workers to get behind this as well. Go join a union. You know, um, get other people in your workplace to join a union as well. I think this is an absolutely fantastic time to go out and join a union. I really do. There's, there's no better more time than it. Because if these rights do go... The only people left to fight for you are going to be these unions. And we are going to have to fight 
so, so hard, so hard to keep these basic rights. And honestly, it's, it's not looking good. Like I say, we've heard these stories consistently since, since well, Daniel Hanan came out for it. And if Gove, as he said, is, is angling to be the next Prime Minister, it's very likely we could see these rights go. And unfortunately, uh, because of the Tories' massive majority that they have, even if everyone, every other party member voted against it, they would still be able to get it through. So the only way we can do that is if we... Well, unfortunately because of the pandemic we can't really protest effectively, but we do have other means. And one, re one mean, one way to do it, petitions, when they get circulated, start signing them. Uh, write to your MP, regardless of whoever they are, say... Do not do this. This will be a terrible, you know, a terrible way to do it. Um, you know, just those two things. Because if we can force them to do a U-turn on that, you know, that's the only way we're going to do it. If we force the Tories into a U-turn. And like I say, this is. I I, I said this would happen. I said this would happen cons consistently, and yet. Here we are, guys. So, Brexiteers, um, again, I said, beware, you know, these people when they come after your basic rights and start getting to get rid of things that, you know, we took for granted for so long, like the Working Time Directive protects so much, and yet people don't really understand what the protections it gives them and what it offers them. You know, I hope you'll fight with us to keep these rights. Because if not, then you've got to ask yourself a serious question. If this is what the Tory right wanted for Brexit all along, was this really the Brexit that you voted for? I know many of you voted to make your lives better. And is getting rid of something like the Working Time Directive good? And ask yourself this question. Would your boss, you know, or your employer... Start to um, make you work longer hours. We already work the longest hours in Europe. You know, ask yourself that serious question. With these rights and protections gone, how likely would your boss be likely to enforce these things? And for a lot of people, that's a scary, <laughs> would almost be an instant yes. Yes, my employer or my boss is going to do this. It's really, really worrying. So, with that said, um, you know, thanks very much for watching. Um, please, please, please do go and join a union. Um, and of course, please do remember to hit the like and share button. Links down below for my Patreon page and a one-off donation link. And thank you very much to the people that do support me that way. And of course, we'll see you all next time.